Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the KNKL Show with your host, Keenan Lafferty. Today is November 19th, 2011. And today, we are going to be exploring the importance of creating thumbnails for your work, for composition, value, and most importantly, mood setting. Yes, and for that, we will be calling upon the spirits and the help of our good friend, Crash Bandicoot. Yes, sir. Yes! So, for those of you who remember this game, it's from the 90s, and it was featured on the PlayStation 1, the very first, the PS. And in a lot of ways, this video game set the bar for many platform games to come. And in many ways, it actually still is one of my favorite platform games. So I thought today we would take another trip into the past and draw one of my favorite video game characters, Crash Bandicoot. And today we'll be focusing very much on, like I said, the thumbnails, the overall composition, the value setting, the mood setting, and all that stuff. So, we'll be going into that right now. And here is our reference. I'll put this over here. And this show begins now. Put myself there. There we go. All right, so... This weekend, what a week it has been, and I have been looking forward to this weekend very much. Mostly because it has given me a chance to relax, and I really have needed that. So it's nice to be back home. And it's nice to be doing the show again. I was actually looking forward to this quite a bit all week. And uh, But I am still looking very much forward to... Thanksgiving and Black Friday, man. Those are going to be some fun days right there. Going to be doing as much shopping for myself and my friends as possible. And that is going to be very fun. So the first thing we're going to do here is, as you saw, put down the canvas and create another layer over top of it where we're going to be, uh, we're going to be pressing, uh, pressing, creating our lines. So just simply make a box like that and Basically, what I'm going to be talking about today is we're going to be solving big problems. Big problems by working small, by creating our thumbnails. So, follow along here. Let's start with four. So, if you hold Alt and drag, you'll create another box. So, create four of them here. And now, a big thing I want to talk about here is when you're creating thumbnails for your composition, you want to pay attention to your space. You never want to create a composition and have your character be like smack dab in the middle. It just never really works very well. You want to think about the space. You want to make this interesting. You want to have flow. You want to direct the person's eye through your piece. And so for that, we will be drawing Crash Bandicoot in anywhere but the center, pretty much. So let's see, one of the first things I want to draw is, let's draw him, say, running away from a boulder. And the easiest way to do that is think of our subject who's going to be in the foreground. And for those of you who uh, tuned in last week to the actual like background painting, this will actually make a lot of sense to you here. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to create these thumbnails with the mental the mental uh, awareness of being able to just pretty much discard them at any moment's notice and start over again. So we'll draw like Crash Bandicoot running towards us, right? So there, there we go, we've got that going. Here's the horizon, right? So he's running down here, and let's make this boulder like extra huge, right? And really, like, the point of, of this is mostly to not really get attached to your thumbnails because you gotta think of them, I mean, I heard once one person said to me, you gotta think of them as almost like trash, like they're post-it notes and you can just get rid of them whenever you want to. And uh, at first it was a little bit weird to think of it that way, but it actually does make quite a bit of sense. But this is the way that I usually do it. It's just kinda create it and literally you could stop right there and move on to the next one. So actually let's just do that. Let's draw that one there. Okay, so you can see here's Crash Bandicoot running. It's really, really simple again. And we'll just move into another one. And almost like, let's try to make this one even more like uh, suggestive, I guess. Like, 
we'll just have we'll, we'll play around with shapes even. Like let's say uh, from the very first one, you have uh, those bridge levels, right? And let's have this bridge here, right? And Crash Bandicoot will be here on this bridge coming through, right? And there's like clouds and stuff. And so you draw those babies in. Draw the other half of that bridge there. And again, play around with the fact that if you press harder, those shapes will appear closer to you. So the further back you get, try to draw with lighter lines. So there you go. See, very quickly already established and you can kind of color things in really quickly. You've already established where those clouds are and where where those uh, objects sit in space. And then of course we'll have Crash maybe. He could be standing here on the bridge like looking over. Looking over it. Here's his ears right there. And uh, usually when I do these thumbnails I'll, I'll express where the where the character's eyes are by just going back in and just kind of erasing them like that. See, and look at how simple that is. So it's very, very suggestive. And here too. <laughs> and they don't even have to be perfect. So let's move on to another one. Let's say, uh, let's draw Coco on a jet ski. For those of you who played the third one. So let's have like some water here. We'll have like a mountain back here, island there, and let's kind of color that in a little bit so we can tell that these islands are closer here. And then Coco will be riding through on a jet ski right there. And yeah. And I do have reference for this on the other screen. So yeah, always be working from reference when you're drawing like another character. It'll always just help. Coco on a jet ski. I do not have a reference of a jet ski, so that won't work as well. <laughs> I'll just kind of color in this water really quickly. Let's say, okay, we want some clouds back here. Right there, our sunlight is coming through there, so we're going to have like a sunbeam coming down through the water. Remember, like I was talking about when we were sketching in that water. And do you see how simple these are? Like, really. And you can make them, I guess, as simple suggestive or as detailed as you want but really for big problems when you're trying to come up with composition and again like this this cocoa is right in the middle like exactly what I said I shouldn't do but that's what's really nice about it is you create these and you can easily just draw another one and be like okay I want to draw that cocoa but maybe from a different angle or move her over to the side to kind of lead the eye a little bit more and then what I like to do is once I establish like my dark colors I'll create another layer behind it and I will like grab a lighter color. I'll start just kind of throwing in a little bit more detail into where I want the lights and like kind of a little bit more of the perspective to be. So I'll like kind of shade in this rock here and draw the little cast shadow underneath it and draw these trees, you know, like that. It's kind of adding more depth to it and just kind of deciding where I want everything to be. And of course, this ground probably would not be even either. Also helps you like establish like your focal points and everything. Like you know, you want this head to be very silhouetted, so make sure that there's like a light behind there. Same here. Make sure that there's like a clear silhouette of Crash Bandicoot's head there and Coco. So now we will do one more. And I don't know exactly when we started this. It feels like we've been going for maybe ten minutes. So we will do a few more. Let's, let's see if we can do six thumbnails. And what I was actually planning on doing, possibly, is going through, like, this is the beginning of my process, where I will just draw these thumbnails. And just sort of try to figure out where I want the composition to be and where I want the characters to be. Let's see, what will we do for the last one? There's a pipe level in Crash Bandicoot 2 that I really like. So let's, let's draw that pipe level. Let's have our horizon be back here. And we'll have this pipe coming down through here, right? It's like a pathway. Like that. Here's our ellipses. So you can see where this pipe is going. All right? And there's always, like, water or something coming through here. And let's go behind this. And kind of draw our darks up front here. And then as it goes further back, it'll get lighter.
See, I mean, you can look at how rough this is exactly. And really how simple it can be. And then we'll go back to this. We'll grab our dark color. And we'll kind of sketch Crash Bandicoot in here. And it can just be kind of uh, doing a kind of a funky pose. So there's his shoes. There's his head there. And oftentimes when you're doing thumbnails like this, like especially with the figure, you can on, you, sometimes you can come up with really cool poses. And it's really easy to kind of change it to, to whatever you want it to be. Like say his hand will be out there. Sometimes the figures will look a little wonky and like not realistic, but honestly it doesn't really even matter. Because like I said, these thumbnails are not really trash, but they're just things that you can draw in like two seconds. So don't don't get attached. Do not get attached to these emotionally. They will they will hurt you. If you do. So let's do two more. Two more. We can do, say, even a simple picture, like I was talking about. Uh, let's say one that focuses on on a pose. Let's say we want to draw Crash Bandicoot doing his spin, and like a let's have like a really cool like dynamic shot of him spinning at us. So we'll have like say we want to have this overall shape here, All right? And then we'll have his face here like that and have those ears look like they're coming at us like this way right this was an arrow see like they're coming up at us so think of it like that shade that in since it is closer to us and then you can kinda of like draw in this for a smile his eyes like that and then yeah, I guess uh, the rest is kind of like a Tasmanian devil tornado thing with like hands coming out. <laughs> like that. But you can see, so experimental, so simple, so easy to draw. And let's draw Aku Aku there with him. And notice how I put that perspective on him as well to help further further illustrate that this is thing is coming at us. It's not just sitting there. I think that's what Aku Aku looks like. Do you have a beard? All right. Well, now he does. <laughs> there we go. And then you can widen and and draw like the the borders even further. You know, like. Really, if you're just worrying about a pose, you can pretty much draw whatever you want. One more! The final. The final piece. Let's see, let's draw Crash on his Nitro Cart. How about that? I don't know what that looks like, but luckily, because we are just doing thumbnails, we don't need to worry about that so much. So I know that I want his cart to be here. cart there and he'll be sitting in it obviously there we go and he'll be kind of leaning into a turn and the steering wheel is like right there <laughs> oh yeah this will be great because uh, once I'm done with these thumbnails I'm thinking for the next few episodes, what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through my process. Like, first we'll start with the thumbnail, and I'll have you guys vote on which thumbnail you want to see taken to a more finished state. And we can go even until the picture is completely finished. And we can kind of progress that way. Get you guys a little more involved, because I think I really want to hear which one you guys would like to see finished. That's great. I just thought of that right now. Brilliant! Brilliant! All right, so we got this coming through here. So let's say we got the road here, all right? Road's here. He's like spinning out. He's got like the smoke and stuff behind him. And this comes over here. Let's say this is like a like a coliseum type thing. He's up 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 on a track, and this track goes back, and then these things are like holding it up. And let's say there's like a temple or something back here.
Let's throw that in. Whoops. And then, and then we can have other people behind him. Like we'll just draw like simple figures just to simulate. Okay, this is like uh, maybe this is Cortex. So he's got like this hair here. <laughs> Hair coming out the side. I don't know if he has a little thing on the top. Actually, I don't think he does. Let's get rid of that. And then, yeah, Crash will have the smoke going through. And then our focal point. Remember, our focal point is Crash's head. So we want to make sure that there is a clear silhouette defined there. Probably have our light source, or at least a lighter source there. And the smoke could even help us uh, create that focal point because of the light that's shining through it. Like we could have the smoke here, and then it's kind of silhouetting and creating a nice focal point on his face there. So yes, that, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to show you that because a lot of people just look at my work and they see the finished piece and they're like, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. But really, there's a lot that goes into that before it even gets to that point. And when I say it's amazing, that's not me being, uh, I hope that doesn't come across as narcissistic. <laughs> What I meant was, people look at it and they like it, they think it's cool, but they don't realize that I don't just sit down and just draw that. There's a lot of thinking, there's a lot of time, and a lot of uh, meditation that goes into creating each of my pieces. Because uh, I like to, especially when you're in a, like a working environment, you really like to have something and know that people have your back on it. And it's, uh, it's a lot easier to do that when you give choice, and people can look at these and they can say, oh yeah, I like the elements of this one, I like that one, you know, let's, let's put those together. So yes, I would like to ask you guys, for my question to you, which one of these would you like to see me take to our, our next step for the next daily? Because like I said, I'm going to be going through my process and so you guys can see it from beginning to end. So if there's any one of these or any element or any level or whatever that you'd like to see, us go forward with on the next daily let me know and we can do that and so my question uh, of the week question that was the question to you question of the week is I've been getting a lot of people asking me what kind of tablet I use so I took a few seconds to just pull that up and this right here this is the tablet that I'm using currently it's actually the Wacom Intuos 4 and it is a very nice tablet it has really good pressure sensitivity and it works really well with Photoshop it's about 349 bucks as you can see down there and trust me it is money well spent it's a good investment for those of you who are looking into going into more digital art so yes I give that my seal of approval and my recommendation so yes definitely check into getting that so with all of that out of the way, I would like to, once again, invite you to draw thumbnails. Draw yourself some thumbnails of like some compositions or a character that you want. It doesn't have to be Crash Bandicoot. doesn't have to be anything, really. It, just, uh, it can be your own character. I just want to see you guys putting together some cool little quick thumbnails, and maybe we can work through our pieces together, and you can follow along and watch what I do and apply it to your work. So if you feel like doing that, make it, submit it to the Facebook, the link's down below, check that out. And for those of you who have been watching and waiting for this episode to come out this morning, I apologize and I'm sorry I had to come out this evening, but most likely from this point forward, Saturday evening will be the best time for me to release these. But just in case, subscribe to my Twitter down there, the link will be down there as well and I can update you on exactly what's going on, when I'm filming, when I'm uploading, and you guys can kind of be kept in the loop on that. So I think that takes care of everything for episode 21 of the KNKL Show. So once again, you guys, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. I am Keenan Lafferty, and I will see you guys next week. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. See ya.